Fantastic. Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to my open TTD Let's Play, where here we are in episode 50. Um, we are going to be wrapping things up today and taking it easy to see how we've got on with our fantastic company, which we named, uh, what was it? It was Tedham Independent Traders. A little later on, we'll be looking at what we're going to be doing after this series, but um, for now, let's check out a few things about the company now now let's have a look now one of the most important things and people sometimes ask is what is the point of open TDD what's the target or goal so if you click uh, the cup you get the company league table now this is based roughly or directly I can't remember on your performance uh, now with well, the league table is pretty much pointless as it's just me in the game but what we can do is bring in a DD, the detailed performance rating and this tells us how well we did in terms of open TTD score so if we look at this we can see uh, that for some reason I think I still have a lot I still have an 11 11 million pound loan well, let's repay that I'm gonna hold control and click repay that's gone um, next time this updates uh, at the end of the month that will change so um, these are the scores of the various if they are it's already updated um, these are the scores the various different things that TTD ranks you on um, vehicles stations and so forth you, it wants you to have 120 vehicles it wants you to have 80 stations it wants the minimum profit on anything that you have let's say the profit on the vehicle with the lowest income okay to be ten thousand pounds uh, we've got some vehicles that aren't making any profit. They're lost leaders, um, so that's why that one's zero. Um, maximum income, minimum income delivered cargo. This is, I think, monthly, is it? Units of cargo delivered in the last four quarters. Okay, so in the last four quarters, they want 40,000. We're doing 120. So we're not really 100% of that. We're more like 300%? Yeah, 300% plus on that one. Uh, the different cargo types, you've got to do eight different and money, you've got to have lots of money, and no loan, all that sort of thing. And the end of it means our score is 876 out of 1,000, 87%. I, I have done games before where it's been uh, like 100%. Um, but for this one, we had a lot of mods in it, and um, it kind of affected our early game a little bit. So let's look at those mods and talk a little, a little bit about them now. So if we go up to, uh, let's see, the options option, hold and scroll down, uh, we get uh, the AI and script settings and the GRF settings. Now just to show you, uh, this particular game had no AIs and no scripts, okay? So um, oh, it didn't have any uh, custom AIs and uh, no scripts. But if we go into the custom GRFs, we can see that we had a, a, quite a number of different things. Now, early on in the game, we did actually use the trams, and they are, it looks like they're still available um, even in 2054. If I put a depot down and have a look inside it for the new vehicles, we still do have some trams available. So that mod. Um, I enjoyed playing with that mod. Um, it did seem to kind of give us something extra. I mean, we don't have many trams. I don't think we have any trams running now, do we? It's all buses. Yeah, we, it's all buses. Uh, but um, the trams were fun to play with. Now, the Furs indus Industry Replacement Set. Now, this is the older version. This is the version 1, 1. 1.4. I think 1.6 might be out now. But there is a Furs 2, so if you want to play that, I highly recommend you do so, as long as the other mods and scripts that you're using are compatible with the newer Furs. Um, now, at the time of starting this Let's Play, um, Furs 2 wasn't out. Um, but it is now, and... There isn't massive differences in Furs 2, um, but there are some, and it's just a couple of little upgrades, to be honest. Um, but it's worth it. I, I do think it's worth it. Uh, let's see here. Next one up is the UK town names. Yeah, we've got apparently UK town names. Um, I'm not so sure about that one. I, I don't think it really mattered too much the UK waypoint sets uh, we didn't really use many waypoints the vacuum train set and the vac wagon is what we can see 
on the screen now. It's just hopped into the depot. Um, insanely expensive to build. Um, but if you're planning on going past the uh, past uh, 2051 in your game and you want to carry on playing past the normal end of the game, I feel it is the natural progression to go from railway electrified monorail, if available, maglev, and then the vac tube. Um, it gives you something else to do after maglev. It gives you something that you have to still save and earn money for and it just adds an extra layer of things to do um, on top of that. And I think the vehicle's getting old and that's why it keeps going to the depot constantly. Uh, the UK Renewal train set and the U um, for um, the main bit and the add-ons. Now, uh, these trains caused me quite a lot of problems early game. If we come over, uh, let's see, let's come over to our manufacturing area because this is where things really started um, quite a lot. We, the, some of the trains, especially in the early days, if we go new vehicles, you can't see a lot of the steam and stuff, but it gives you, I mean, there's lots and lots of cool vehicles to play around with and use. Um, now, I don't know if these fuel cell ones are part of that. I think they are, actually. Um, I'd have to check, though. Um, but there's just so many interesting trains that have been added. The problem is with these is a lot of them aren't... They've been balanced to be a little bit harder, so their their costs, their running costs, are, uh, their cost and the running cost, sorry, are both quite high. Um, so yeah, I mean, in the efficiency of your tracks in this in this particular game had to be really really efficient, especially with um, the costs of building the railways. Uh, now this steel mill, I was bringing all the iron and st ore and stuff to it. It was it's quite challenging. Now one of the challenging things about this, and something I didn't think about at the beginning, is the use of this train set with the first mod, because with the first mod it means that uh, in standard Open TTD, um, or at least it used to be. I don't know if it's changed since I last looked. Uh, if you got one farm item, for example, one hopper of grain and sent it to a factory. The factory would then turn it into one um, wagon of goods. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. With furs, it doesn't work like that. You need like four of a primary resource to make a middle resource, and then you need four of the middle resource to make the end product. Um, so you need a lot more of the um, primary resources to get something out of it at the end, which means you don't get as much product at the end of your chain. We don't make as much money from your chain and because you're not making quite as much money from your chain initially that coupled with the expensive trains really is a big challenge so if you want to use them a train set and furs bear that in mind um the original cargo vehicle set that's all cool um industrial stations reno we actually use the industrial stations the graphics um don't really match that well with zed base they do it kind of this zoom and that zoom almost, but when you go into the next zoom, the track and the depots look okay, but the stations really aren't quite up to scratch. And of course, we the trams, um, that's just part of the tram set. And then uh, we've got a UK road set, which, um, to be honest, I don't notice the difference. Uh, and then hover buses. Now, hover buses was fun. I think if you're going to be going past 2051, um, hover buses are another thing which are really cool to add to the game along with the vac tubes. We can see some hover buses of going absolutely hurtling along. When you've got trains that are going thousands of miles per hour, like a vac tube, it makes sense that you have a bus which is going flipping quick. This one's going at 248, it's still increasing, I believe it can go um, even quicker. Now, Oh, we're getting an error message on the auto renew of our train. It's 10 years old, it wants to auto renew, but let me guess, that particular train is no longer available. Yeah, it's it doesn't seem like it. This is the the VAC train experiment, and this and we haven't got that. What we'd have to do is and I did a tutorial about this not long ago, is go to trains. Manage list, replace vehicles, and then in here where we've got the vacuum experiment, we'd have to change it to one of these. So uh, the Frontier, the Euroliner, or the Airline Killer. 
Um, the airline killer is the fastest. Um, I, I don't know really. I'm just looking at reliability and I'm going to say the Euroliner. There we go. So that's a little bit about the mods. Um, I didn't want to talk about them too much. I hope it wasn't too much for you guys. Um, the cities that we have produced here have been quite good. Uh, Gengfing Hill is 21,000. Tedham only 15. I thought Tedham would end up being the biggest and Ladin Hatton is huge. 18,000. Let's look at the actual list for the town directory and do sort by population. There we go. And we can see here that um, whilst Ladding Hatton and Tedham and uh, Gengfing Hill are all there in the top five, um, Fuborn actually did really well. Now this is the town where we put our coal mines at. Um, those coal mines with the trains that change their wagons Overall, I think they were doing quite well originally, not doing so well at the moment because they need a bit of a bit of love, a bit of looking after, a bit of tweaking probably, all getting very old. Um, that's something that gets difficult with playing this game past 2050, uh, is that you end up with uh, trains and vehicles getting old and you, you struggle to replace them. Uh, but Farbra is the biggest town by far. Which is a surprise, really, because we, we only really brought in later in the episodes. But I think, yeah, we did have a tram service here going for quite some time. And it's that tram service that helped keep it really uh, a big, uh, big network. Um, if you want to know how to grow a town to its maximum capacity, there is a tutorial on that on my page. But the, the short version of the story is, is that you need five stations moving cargo in and out uh, of some description uh, at least once every month and then that's it the town in a standard game of uh, open ttd will grow to its maximum ability um now um towns we've done quite well on the time some of them are really big really huge other ones not so much this is the um some of the buildings and so forth in the um from the mods uh, i did get asked quite a lot about these buildings uh, i don't know don't always play open TTD games this late. Very often multiplayer games don't get this far into the game and you don't get these huge skyscrapers. So it's not something I'm as familiar with. Let's have a quick look at our money. And of course, um, at this late stage of the game, I would expect myself to normally have like billions. Uh, but we're in the millions, um, largely due to that uh, poor start, the high costs on trains, and it's just basically, it's all uh, it was all rather difficult, to be honest, with all those mods going on at once. Uh, we didn't do any subsidies. Um, we have uh, only just got rid of our loan, which is a, uh, a bit of a surprising thing. I don't know why I took that out, but never mind. Uh, we can see, obviously, our train income is pretty big um, in comparison to our other items. Train running costs also very big. 156 million last year on the income. 99 and a half million on the outcome uh, that is only approximately a one-third profit which I would normally expect to be a lot bigger if we look at this infrastructure piece of information here it tells you the number of rail pieces and so forth so um, we've got no railway left because we converted it all to electrical which we've got 8,000 of we've got um, 14,000 maglev and 2,000 um, pieces of signals. Uh, of course, we've got some RAM, and we've still got some tramway somewhere. We've got six squares of tramway somewhere on the map. Uh, we did some canals. Um, that's a good point. Where are our canals gone? Um, we didn't do canals there. I don't remember where we did canals. Um, I thought it might have been around here because I know that we did some oil from the, the from these from this rig. Um, but just. No, that doesn't seem to be it. Uh, if we go to the map and stretch it over the screen so we can see the whole thing and just click this button here, it shows us our network um, across the world. Now, the world is actually quite big in comparison to how much we've done. Uh, we did a lot of redoing, a lot of um, kind of fixing playing and 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 tweaking in this particular game and didn't didn't expand a massive amount you can see the uh, main industrial network all working down here and then a big fat main line which to be honest works really well and we never get any clogs on the main line 
um, but there aren't a massive amount of trains. There's a lot of maglev ones zipping about very quickly. I mean, there's one, there's a couple. That's about it, really. You, there's there's some here. You know, you've got one there and, and two there. It'd be interesting to see how those two cope with a junction. Let's watch them coming to. Well, all three come into Fong Fing Way. Uh, there's the first one. Now he's just going to go straight into the station there. Now I'm guessing. Oh, looks like. Ah, uh, no, there's actually four of them. So then the other one's going to take the other line because that's the line it was on. Doesn't look like they get too much of a choice, but they all come sliding into the station brilliantly. Uh, and that's because this station is a by entrance station. Um, there's two different options to entering at the same time, and there's two different options for exiting. So it should distribute the trains quite nicely. In fact, you can see them leaving at the same time here, and it kind of meets up quite nicely with the main line. Again, we've got a train leaving, another train leaving at the same time. Uh, without any problems. So that kind of style of day is quite difficult to see because this one is on a corner. It's not the best way of doing it. I think we might be able can we see it better at Tedham? Let's go down to Tedham and have a look to see if that one's done in the same way. Well it is, but it's had to go around this grain mill which is still there um, and it's got a road bridge over it as well. So again, not easy to see. Um, but, ne <laughs> but never mind. Um, I think I have done examples of that before. Uh, we did eventually do airports, and if we look at our aeroplanes, we can see uh, they're all pretty much making a nice profit. Um, profits of, let's say, some of them, well, I don't know what the cost ratio, let's have a look at the monies on that side of things. So, uh, aircraft income last year was 23 million, aircraft running cost costs were only 8 million. So you can see it's well more than double, nearly triple. Uh, in in terms of profit and that's the sort of thing I'd normally expect to see on trains without the mods that we have um, of course there's no mods on the airplanes that I'm aware of although at least the mods that we're using um, don't really go that far um, so so yeah so um, we've looked at uh, the aircraft let's have a quick look at our ships how are they getting on well some of them are actually still making a profit despite me pretty much ignoring them. We did have an experimental ship down at the bottom. Uh, I think that did make a profit, but I just can't be bothered to keep up to date with it and keep it running. I think we still have some of the infrastructure here for it somewhere. No, did I delete that too? Don't remember. Uh, but the ships are generally doing quite well, picking up that oil and dropping it off on our mini oil network, um, which comes into this refinery here. Now this refinery, it's got, it's got some problems because of a UFO. So I will actually just quickly fix that up. There we go. Bit of, it's a bit messy, but uh, you get the idea. In fact, if we just fast forward a little bit, we should be able to see that they flow out better. There we go. So we've got lots dropping off um, into the oil refinery. And of course, the other side where the trains are picking up and taking off. I think it's the petroleum. Chemicals, petrol, petrol. Yeah, they're taking petrol out. Um, now we can't really see how well they're doing because they were just blocked because of a UFO, but in general, they're making half a million each a, a year on these trains. That's really good. And of course, we've got the um, feedback loop of taking things to the machine shop and making engineering supplies. That is something that I really enjoy, and that's part of FERS. So if you want something where you're producing materials and there's a, there's a, a resource feedback loop and all that sort of thing, definitely check out the FERS thing if you've not done it before. Uh, Industries directory, we can have a look at production and see what's making the most produced items. Um, We've got this recycling plant, I think. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, the, the thing that's producing the most is this recycling plant, and we're not actually interfacing with it. That's a terrible example. This recycling plant, so basically recycling plants are just big anyway. So discounting those, um, the biggest thing is the oil refinery. So the oil system that I put in place seems to be doing very well. And to be honest, the way that the trains flow around and loop around on this section um, and of course the, the optional passing depot there um, all looks very good all looks like it's flowing through very well um, for nearly half a million litres 
of uh, petrol was produced last month, 80% of it was transported. I'm not transporting any of the chemicals. Was chemicals something that the machine shop requires? No, it's farms, uh, no wait, it is uh, metal and petrol. So we're just taking the petrol to it. Um, so yeah, now one thing that um, you might need to make sure is, is that we, we have a quick look at uh, the, dis the, the display, this chain for the machine shop. So you can see the machine shop's chain is very big. Okay, so it's got uh, four different things, uh, two that go in and two that go out, and they can come from many places and go to many places. Um, so that's something that I really do enjoy about FIRST. Definitely glad I played with FIRST. Let's look at some of the op operating profit and things like that. So the operating profit, a bit up and down as it has been throughout the course of this Let's Play, um, reflecting that difficult profit making on the trains earlier in game. It's easier now, but the margins are still not as big. The income graph, pretty level. Um, we haven't done any massive expansions. I would expect that be the, to be the only reason why we actually get a bit of a profit on there. Um, delivered cargo, again, pretty level because we haven't really put any new infrastructure in or made any major improvements. Uh, company performance rating, of course. That's um, that's where you can look on the detailed performance rating list and you see how well it's done. You see when we were talking earlier in the episode and I paid off the loan, that's this little chunk here, I think. Um, so it has popped up there, which is uh, which is cool and quick look at the cargo payment rates and we know that that is a terrible terrible graph with furs um, usually easier to disable everything and then just add a few things that you might be interested in um oh we can see here that actually that last one that i clicked what was it clay no it wasn't clay was it to scrap metal scrap metal is really good it doesn't go off you can transport it for up to 70 days i think that is yeah 70 days and the payment rates don't drop and it's quite high there you are as a tip for you, scrap metal, good for furs. Um, find out by accident by Master Hellish. Uh, so if we have a look here and sort by profit um, oh, in November, so this year, we can see a lot of our trains here are in terrible, terrible profits. I think that's because a lot of them are on this loop round here. This loop's quite new. Uh, it was done in the later stage of the game, and there's not a lot of passengers waiting, to be honest. There's probably too many trains around here. In fact, there isn't probably too many trains. There's almost certainly too many trains. I mean, look at all these trains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, about twenty-one uh, trains going round this loop. It's quite a small loop. They're maglev trains, so they're not going to take long to go from station to station. Um, to be honest, we probably could have done with two trains. Uh, one going one way and one going the other. Maybe even two going each way. So, um, oh, we've got a plane crash. Seven people. We we don't want to we don't want to kill seven people and end the episode on that. That's terrible. <laughs> but um, so yeah, um, trains not doing so well. But there's there's many trains that we're aware of why they're not doing well. Things like this iron ore train here as well. This iron ore train is just fueling another iron ore mine, which is having its um, iron taken away to that steel mill. But as a general rule, if you discount those ones on that loop. Uh, we've got a few round here that don't make money. Um, you get part way down the list. You're about, you're about a third of the way down the list of trains. And then they're starting to make some money. In fact, if you go right to the end here, our vacuum train made over 5 million last year. This is one of the reasons why we're not making a lot of money in these late stages of the game is because we haven't moved on to the newer technologies. Um, and we do have 112 million now in the bank after I've been waffling on for the last 23 minutes. Uh, so we could actually afford a little bit of that tube. So the, uh, the ships were doing quite well. Um, and these, these hover buses, these hover buses are fantastic. They really do shift. Um, I don't know whether we're really using them to their best of their abilities in these towns up here. We're using the hover buses to grow the towns. So we've got the airport. I didn't put any in there. Um, but some of these are making like half half a million a year just flying around the map. And uh, yeah, well, there we go. We've kind of looked at the vehicles and the mods and what we've grown, what we've achieved, what we found difficult. Um, would I do this particular scenario exactly the same again? Probably not because I tend not to do the same things twice very often. I like to try new things. Um, but overall, 
I did enjoy the new challenge and it has given me lots of ideas for things in the future. Speaking of things into the future, wow, that was a brilliant un unintended segue and then I spoiled it by pointing it out. Um, Open TTD Series 5 Let's Play is going to be brilliant. I mean, like, the best series so far. Um, and I'm saying that with some confidence. Um, but that is, again, just my opinion. Um, I mentioned things already, like that it's going to be interactive and things like that. What I'm going to do, and I think this is the first reveal of this, is that we're going to have a city builder challenge race thing okay um, precise details will be released uh, in a couple of weeks time when the new series starts so the new series is going to start a few weeks after this one we're going we're to have a couple of weeks rest from open ttd we're going to get some of the rim world let's play through and some transport fever i'm really enjoying transport fever at the moment as well as rim world um, but we're going to we're going to do a, a bit of a break from open ttd and when we come back we're going to do this city builder challenge we're going to have an absolutely mahoosive map. And in the middle of that map, we're going to have a tiny weeny town. And we're going to start with a little number of people. We're going to use the Simpleton City Builder script um, to do that. So we haven't had that in this one. We have used that script in viewers games. And in addition to that, we're going to use the Furs mod. When you put Furs with the City Builder script, it just adds a load of brilliant complexity and challenges which, when we've done multiplayer games, have been really fun. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do with that, how we can work with that. Um, and I say we, because there's a couple of different ways that this is going to be interactive. First things first, I'm going to, every now and then in the episodes, have a couple of guests. So if you want to be um, part of the guests, I'll give you opportunities um, once we start the series to tell you how you could be a guest on the series. Next up, um, we are going to be having it so that you guys can play along too. So the map for the challenge and all the mods and so forth will be available to download on the website. Not only will you be able to just play along, but I actually want you guys to send me your progress so we can compare your methods and techniques and your progress to mine. And what we'll do is we'll probably have an episode where I build, I progress, I grow, and then maybe we'll have an episode where we look at somebody else's map to see how they are doing the same thing, to see how far ahead or behind me they are and how they could improve or how I can improve from things that they can take. So so it's going to be a learning experience, it's going to be interesting, it's going to be challenging, it's going to be interactive, you guys can get involved, we're going to probably have an unofficial league table, um, I'm looking forward to how we can do this. The the viewers games we've done with, these, with the script and the mod have been really good fun and I'm looking forward to seeing how we can go from in a very early stage in a game right through to the end of Open TTD with those settings. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this summary episode finishing off this series, and I hope I've whipped your appetite for Series 5. If you want to know more about me, of course, go to masterhellish.net, and please, please do check out my social media if you use any of the Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Blogger, Google+, Tumblr, or any of them, because you find out about the events that I do, and the giveaways I have, and all those sorts of things, which people always say, oh, I didn't know about that. Well, I... I do put it there so check it out and find out about those sorts of things and speaking of giveaways let's do one to end the series um, let me just go have a look in my goodie bag here there we go right so looking in my goodie bag I got various uh, different games here and I actually have one two three four five six is that six or five it looks like five it is. I've got five Star Wars games here. So what we'll do is we'll bundle those together and I'll give away all six games as part of this giveaway. So to be part of the giveaway, all you've got to do is put a comment on this video. At the end of your comment, put three exclamation marks. Those exclamation marks let me know that you want to be part of the competition. Sometimes after, seven days from this video being released, I will pick one random winner from up to the first 100 entrants and that winner will be contacted through the YouTube messaging system with your prize you can um, add those games to your steam and play well there we go we're coming up to the 30 minute mark on this video and i'd like to thank you very much for watching you guys hand your and your comments and all that sort of things have been absolutely brilliant and i hope that you continue to follow and support me through everything that we do 
I've really enjoyed this Let's Play. It's been challenging and it's been different, but I cannot wait for the next one, and I hope you can't too. So, for now, for this series, for me, take care, and goodbye.